it's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Welcome to chapter number eight, quadratics. This is something that we have come across in the past, but we will be taking the quadratics a stage further. We're going to start off with lesson one, which is sketching a parabola. So to begin with, before we get on to that, what actually is a quadratic? Well, you know, a quadratic is an expression where the highest power of x is two. The standard form of a quadratic will therefore look something like this, where you have ax squared plus bx plus c, and that would equal zero. Remember, a, b, and c are constants. A cannot be zero and x is the unknown variable. Some of you may be thinking, why quads for quadratics? Because quad means four. Well, actually, uh, quad is from the Latin word quadratus, which means square. And obviously a square has four sides, which is where that comes from. Okay, but quadratic is an expression where the highest power of x is two, so it's going to be something squared. The graph of a quadratic is known as a parabola, and if the coefficient of x squared is positive, then the graph is going to look like a smiley face, just like that. Woo! And if the coefficient of x squared is a negative, the graph is going to look like a sad face. Oh! The parabola crosses the x-axis at what's known as its roots. And all parabolas have an axis of symmetry, or a line of symmetry. So to sketch a quadratic, or a parabola, there are different ways to do this. One of them is to use uh, the completed square form, and another way is this method here, which I will show you. So to sketch a parabola, you can decide if the graph is a smiley face or a sad face. To do this, look at the coefficient of x squared. Remember, it's positive, it's a smiley face, negative, it's a sad face. You then want to find out where the graph crosses the y-axis, and it's going to cross the y-axis at zero something. So in other words, your x value will be zero. You can find out where it crosses the x-axis as well, and it's going to cross the x-axis when y is zero, because it will cross at something zero. Remember, these places that it crosses are known as the roots. If you average these two x values, you can find out the axis of symmetry. And remember, a vertical line has the equation x equals some number, x equals a constant. You can then use this value of x to find out the maximum or minimum turning point. Let's go then with example number one. Sketch the graph of y equals x squared minus 6x. We'll just put that on the other page. So sketch the graph, y equals x squared minus 6x. First thing that you notice is that x squared is a positive, and if x squared is a positive, it means the graph's going to look like a smiley face. Woohoo! After that, you can find out where the graph crosses the y-axis. It's going to cross the y-axis when x is zero. So all you do is you go up to the equation at the start, and you let x be zero. So instead of x squared, you've got zero squared. Instead of take away six times x, you've got six times zero. If you work that out, it just becomes zero take away zero, which is zero. Meaning then, it will cross the y-axis at the point zero, zero. You then want to think, where does it cross the x-axis? And it's going to cross the x-axis when y is zero. So once again, getting rid of that, you want to start off just with your original equation, and you're thinking, well, now I want to let y be zero. So in other words, zero equals x squared take away six x, and to put in the zero on the other side. To solve that for x, you want to factorize. So take out x as the highest common factor. After that, if you multiply them to get zero, then either x is zero or x minus six is zero, meaning x would be zero or six. You've then got these two points. So x is zero, y is zero, giving you zero, zero, and x is six, y is zero, giving you six, zero meaning then the graph is going to look something like that if you start sketching it. It's crossing at 0, 0 and 6, 0. Moving on, after you have done that, you want to think about the axis of symmetry, the line of symmetry, and that's going to be halfway between 0 and 6. Obviously, that is just going to be 3. So again, if you were sketching that just as you go, there's 0, there's 6, halfway between them is 3, so that's your axis of symmetry drawn in there. Remember, the equation for your axis of symmetry would just be x equals that number, so it's going to be x equals 3. 
We want to find out this turning point though, so how do you get the turning point, Lily? Perfectly right. Yes, once you've done that, you want to sub that value, x equals 3, into the original equation. So we had y equals x squared minus 6x, replacing x with 3, and that would work out to be negative 9. Meaning then, there would be a minimum turning point at 3, negative 9. It's a minimum turning point because you can see clearly that that is the lowest point on that graph. Therefore, you can plot that and you can say that would be 3, negative 9. And that would be your answer for example 1. Example number 2. Sketch the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. Once again, start it the same way. You notice from this that x squared, the coefficient is 1. It's a positive number. Therefore, the graph is going to look like a smiley face. It'll look something like that. After that, it's going to cross the y-axis when x is 0. So you can replace x in the original equation with 0. So you would have a 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 15. That becomes 0, take away 0, take 15, which is negative 15. Giving you the point then, 0, negative 15. Because x is 0, y is negative 15, and you get that point. Think about where it crosses the x-axis next. And it's going to cross the x-axis when y is 0. So in other words, you've got 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. So you'd have that. To solve that, once again, you want to factorise. So factorise x squared, take 2x, take 15. You'd have x plus 3, x minus 5. And from there, you can find out the values of x. So solving them, you'd have x is negative 3, or x is 5. Giving you the two points, negative 3, 0, and 5, 0. And if you started graphing it, you could say that it's going to cross at negative 3, 0, and 5, 0 on the x-axis, and remember the y-axis is crossing at 0 and negative 15, so you've also got that point there as well. The axis of symmetry, you know the axis of symmetry? The point is going to be halfway between negative 3 and 5. So to get that, you probably do that in your head, and you know 1 is halfway between them, so there's an axis of symmetry when x equals 1. But remember, if it's a bit harder with more difficult numbers, you can just add these two values together and then divide by 2. You're really just taking the mean of those two numbers. So from there, negative 3 and 5, halfway between them is 1. So x equals 1 would be your axis of symmetry. To get the turning point, listen to Lily. She's perfectly right. You want to replace x with 1 in the original equation to find out what the y value would be. So from there, you've got x squared, take 2x, take 15. Sub in 1, and you would end up with negative 16 giving you once again a minimum or a maximum turning point. Which one would it be this time? A minimum, perfect, because that's the lowest point on that graph. So you've got a minimum turning point at 1, negative 16. And finishing off your graph, you're just adding in that minimum turning point. So you've got where it crosses the x-axis, the y-axis, and then that minimum turning point. Example number three. Sketch the graph of y equals 8 minus 2x minus x squared. So once again, think about the coefficient of x squared. Is it positive? Is it negative? Here, because it's take away x squared, the coefficient would be negative 1, meaning the graph is it's going to be sad. So your parabola will look something like that when you graph it. Find out where it crosses the y-axis. Again, it's going to be when x equals 0. So replace x in the original equation with 0, you would have 8 minus 2 times 0 minus 0 squared, which works out to be 8, take away 0, take away 0, which is just 8. Giving you the point, 0, 8. So that is where it will cross the y-axis. Find out where it's going to cross the x-axis, that will be when y is 0. So you've got 0 equals 8 take away 2x minus x squared. Just writing that slightly differently. Um, you would have... 8 minus 2x minus x squared equals 0. To solve that, again, you want to factorise. What I would probably do, though, is it's easier to factorise when you've got a positive uh, value for x squared. So I'd probably add x squared to both sides, add 2x to both sides, minus 8 from both sides, or move everything over the equal sign, whichever way you want to think about it. And you would have x squared, add 2x minus 8 equals 0. Meaning then, 
you can factorize that to get x plus 4, x minus 2, and you get the two values for x. As you just saw, there's another way of doing that, though you could, if you're quite confident with this, factorize straight away. And if you factorize straight away, then you would get 4 add x, 2 minus x equals 0. Again, you get the two values for x, negative 4 and 2. So think about it whichever way you want. Rearrange it to get a positive value of x squared, or just factorize just like that. Just be uh, sure that you're okay doing that. You get those two values. From there, you can then say that it's going to cross at negative 4, 0 and 2, 0, meaning then that you will have something that looks like that. Again, your uh, parabola is going to look like a sad face. To find out the axis of symmetry, again, you're thinking what number is between negative 4 and 2. You might be able to work it out or just add them together and divide by 2. If you add them together and divide by 2, you will find that x equals negative 1. So your axis of symmetry will be there at negative 1. So you've just got that vertical line drawn in there. For the turning point, again, take that value. When x is negative 1, you want to find out what y is. So go back to your original equation and replace x with negative 1. Doing that gives you a value of 9. Meaning then you'll have a maximum or a minimum turning point at uh, 1, negative 1, 9. Maximum or minimum turning point, which one would it be, max? Well done, max. It would be a max. It is the maximum turning point at negative 1, 9. Good. And if you just finish that off, you can graph it then, and you can see that there's negative 1, 9. Maximum turning point is crossing the y-axis at 0, 8, and it's crossing the x-axis at 2 and negative 4. One more example. Example number 4. This one is slightly different. So this time, find the equation of the parabola in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In other words, you want to find the values of a, b, and c. Um, you know the parabola passes through the points 3, 0, negative 2, 0, and 0, negative 12. So you're wanting to work out the equation of the parabola. To do that, you need to think about the information they're giving you. And the information you have is just these three points. But from there, if you think about it, well, you know that the value of y is 0 when x is 3, and also the value of y is 0 when x is negative 2. Really, what you want to do is you're working backwards here. So if you take the other examples, you're going back the way. Because you know if x is negative, uh, sorry, if x is 3, then you can say x take away 3, subtracting 3 from both sides will give you 0. And if you add 2 to both sides here, you can say x add 2 equals 0. You know then that the parabola will be of the form something times, and you've got an x minus 3 and an x plus 2. Again, it's similar to those other examples. When you factorised, you maybe got x minus 3 and x add 2. So you know x would equal 3 there, and x would equal negative 2. So you're going back the way. And make sure you put some value in here. And you're just going to say it's k, and k is going to be a constant. You know then the parabola will look something like that. So y equals k times x minus 3, bracket x plus 2. If you multiply out those brackets, you'll have k times x squared minus x minus 6. From there, though, you don't know this value of k. And you know it's not just x squared minus x minus 1, or it could be, but you are given more information. Okay, There is a value in front of the x squared. And using this other information, you can find out what that value will be. So because the parabola passes through 0, negative 12, you can say that when x is 0, y is negative 12. If you replace them then, if you replace x with 0 and y with negative 12, the only thing missing will be k. So you could work that out. So y would equal, replace x with 0, k times 0 squared minus 0 minus 6 would equal negative 12. If you work that out, well, 0 squared 0, take away 0, take away 6 would just give you negative 6 times k, which is negative 6k. If that's equal to negative 12, then the value of k must be dun, 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 2. So negative 6 times 2 would give you negative 12. So you know that value of k is 2. Therefore, your equation then would be, going back up here, you would have k times x squared minus k times x squared minus x minus 6, and the value of k is 2, so you've got k 
uh, 2 times x squared minus x minus 6. Multiplying out the brackets will give you 2 times x squared minus 2 times x minus 12. And that is the equation of the parabola. Try these questions on your own. It is in the Heinemann Harbert page 150, exercise 8C. Give it a shot, see how you get on, ask if you need a hand. Have fun.